Good evening. I'd like to call the September 25th, 2014 meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees to order. First item is the roll call. David Nelson. Here. Nick Rico. Here. Rob McSorley. Present. Seth Garrison. Here. I'm Charles Anderson. And Jason Greenleaf and Ben Viola are absent uh, due to work uh, conflicts this evening. The uh, next item is the approval of the minutes of August 28, 2014. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any uh, corrections, comments, or uh, additions? Mr. Chairman, I found a typo that I will pass along to Wendy after the meeting. Okay. Nothing substantive. Thank you. Anyone else? All those in favor of the motion to approve? None opposed. Thank you. Uh, Superintendent Operations Report. Copy of the uh, monthly report of operations for the month of August is included in the packet. Our average F1 flow for the month was 1.5 million gallons a day. During the past month, we did, a, uh, did have a significant rainfall event on August 13th that resulted in six inches of rain over a very short period of time. With the high flows as a result of this rain, the secondary clarifiers were not able to retain all of the solids, which resulted in F1 permit exceedances for settable solids and total suspended solids. Other than those three exceedances, our F1 quali quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 95% removal for both uh, BOD and total suspended solids with average conf concentrations of 9 and 11 milligrams per liter. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of August is included in your packet. I highlighted the pump stations that went into high water alarm during the six inch rain event. As a follow up, uh, we will focus our attention in these areas to try to identify II sources. Uh, also note that pump station two had a malfunction and transducer, transducer and this issue has been resolved. The, um, that resulted in some er errant uh, pump station flows. Um, with regards to some of those pump stations going into high water alarm, as we've been looking, um, examining the pump stations, we have found that uh, some of the wet wells were actually underwater during those uh, high water at high water rain events. So it's not an uh, unusual for that to go into high water alarm. Uh, the main uh, pollutant discharge elimination system permit and the main wastewater discharge license permit renewals uh, have been submitted. Uh, they were submitted on September 2nd. These applications are to renew the permit that allows the district to, uh, the district to discharge uh, the treated wastewater from the district's wastewater treatment facility located on Black Point Road into the Atlantic Ocean through the district's outfall. The public notice was advertised on August 31st and notices were sent to all of our abutters. A copy of application is available at uh, the DEP office in Augusta here at the Scarborough Town Hall, our district offices on Black Point Road, and uh, they're also available on our website. Uh, Maine DOT is currently designing the replacement of the railroad bridge on Pine Point Road. This work is scheduled to commence in the fall of 2015. It is likely we will need to relocate our force main and also, um, as we've been looking at it, our gravity sewer along a portion of the Snows Canning Road. I am currently working with Rosbera Brothers to develop an estimate for the, uh, the cost of this work. We will need to include these costs in next year's budget. The aeration tank valve actuators are now installed. The new control panel, CP7, is also installed. Woodward Current is scheduled to complete the programming for the new actuators uh, mid-October. These actuators have been, have been installed to further improve our ener energy efficiency of our operations there at the treatment plant. I've executed a three-year electrical supply contract for our small accounts with Constellation Energy through main power options. This contract increased our power costs um, to um, 9.3 cents a kilowatt hour from what we were paying, which was 7.2 cents a kilowatt hour. Our medium accounts, which includes the treatment plant, are currently covered under our contract that will expire in 2016. Under that contract, we're paying um, basically six cents a kilowatt hour. 
We are pilot testing a new capacitance types level control for our pump stations. It's called the fog rod level control. It's a capacitance type. Uh, WEFTEC, which is a international uh, uh, conference for uh, for the Water Environment Association, um, is coming up uh, beginning this coming week. Glenn Bellafair will be attending the this uh, technical conference. This is an international conference that provides an opportunity to attend technical presentations on wastewater conveyance treatment and disposal issues from all over the world. In addition, um, vendors from all over will be there with the equipment, giving Glenn an opportunity to review and compare different makes and models right there at the show. We had two odor complaints this past month, uh, one on 18 Old Neck Road on September 4th. Um, Ms. Frackman called to report a strong sewer odor. I responded and could not detect one at her home, but I did notice an odor around the pump station. I checked the odor control system. It was fully operational. We did, a fa we did uh, find a failed odor control chemical metering pump at one of the remote pump stations that flows to this station. We also had a uh, odor, control, uh, odor complaint at 42 Old County Road on the same day. I met with uh, Ms. Ward um, at her home there. I inspected the area around the pump station, which is pump station 11 on Old County Road, and her home, which is uh, about 1,200 feet from the pump station. And I could not detect any sewer odor at all in that area. Uh, when I met with Ms. Ward at her home, um, uh, she, she at times could smell a faint odor. I was not convinced it was a sewer smell. Uh, it should be noted that the winds were blowing off the marsh to her house at that time, and the pump station was down downwind from her house. I pointed that out to her, and she um, decided that what she was smelling was uh, likely coming from the marsh. And one last item, um, as reported uh, last um, month, uh, we had that claim on Arborview Road where um, there was a backup of the sewer into the basement of uh, I forget the number of Arbor View, but um, the insurance company has completed the analysis of that claim and has determined that we are not responsible and has denied that claim. That's all Any I questions have. for the superintendent on his report? I do have a question. Yes, sir. Um, I'm wondering, Dave, if you could talk a little bit about. Uh, you know, the high flow issues that we had, what type of investigations that you're thinking of doing, and maybe elaborate a little bit more on any I and I investigation plans in terms of CCTV or, or lateral inspections or, or your thoughts on that. What we have been finding very effective is during heavy rain events um, is actually going out in the areas that we have um, any high flows in um, pumping manholes and following the flow. Um, by doing that, we have been very successful at identifying areas, uh, um, uh, either cross connections of, uh, of storm drains or clean out caps that have fallen off or um, areas where we're getting sump pumps. Um, you know, you know I, I have found that much more effective than a lot of the other approaches to of II analysis. Doing flow monitoring or yeah. Yeah, modeling or just, CCTV. Just, yeah. just physically getting out there, then getting wet and, and following the flow. Are you having a feel that it's more on our side of the system or more private homeowner type issues? Uh, well, during this past event, I think it was uh, in our system, we had a, a lot of manholes underwater. Um, I would tend to bet all of Higgins Beach was underwater. Um, there, there was that manhole, that uh, that drain manhole on Black Point Road. That there's a cross connection there um, that they had blocked off, but they they had actually had um, some cars that were starting to go underwater that they opened up the drain. Um, but other than this past event, I would say the majority of the issues, most of the time, is due to sump pumps. I have in the past sent out letters reminding people that some pumps have, are not um, appropriate in uh, connections, and it's, um, I think I mentioned this last time, it's probably due to do that again. Yeah. Good, thank you. Other questions? Rob? A couple of questions. Uh, the work on Pine Point Road, do you have any feel for about what that project might uh, 
see in the range of? I don't at this time. I mean, I could give you a wild guess, but I'm not. I would not want to bet my paycheck on it. <laughs> um, you know, maybe fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Well, that you know, fifty anywhere from forty to seventy-five. That yeah. would be realistic. Okay. Um, the cost of our small electric count looks like it's gone up by thirty percent. How much of our two hundred by thousand dollar electrical budget does that constitute? That's actually a very small portion of it, fortunately. Um, it's uh, I had looked at those numbers recently, and I believe it was about thirty percent of the overall counts. So okay. I, can, I can confirm that number for you. No, no, it just gives me a rough yeah. idea of what we're looking for increased cost. Yeah, that was good. Um, I have a question. Um, I guess just following up on that, looking at the uh, looking at the medium accounts that were good through through December 2016, um, have you had any discussions with main power options about whether we would be whether it be advantageous for us to explore renegotiating those accounts? Early, rather than waiting to, to go full term on those to see whether we could get f more favorable longer term agreements, or is that just a premature issue right now? Uh, it's premature at this point. As a matter of fact, um, main, main power options, um, they said we made a very uh, wise move in signing that contract. Um, we, we Signing that contract at the, the low end of uh, electrical cost, and mm -hmm. we're actually really making out on that one quite well. Um, you know, there may be a time with regards to the small accounts that might be wise to renegotiate uh, as as we move forward, because uh, they're anticipating that the electrical cost will drop in the next few years as supply becomes better. Mm -hmm. Um, on our um, MPDS permit, um, do we have a timeline for the review and processing at this point? Uh, we don't. Our, our permit is about to expire, um, but it automatically just continues in place uh, until the renewal is, is complete. Um, I've called DEP actually a number of times um, just you know, seeing where we are, and they have actually not even had an uh, opportunity to even look at our application just yet. Um, I'm assuming um, when the actual construction documents are ready for the work to be done in association with the Pine Point Bridge replacement, that that's work that we'll be bidding. We can. I hadn't really even given that thought. Okay. Any thought at this point? Well, if you're working with Rusbara to develop prices, I just want to be fair to them that they yeah. don't give you a that they don't give you a uh, price that gets publicized, and yeah. then and then uh, folks work with that number to their disadvantage. So just to be fair to everybody, I think we just need to think about yep. how you handle that with them. Uh, thanks. Um, that's no other comments or questions. I'll, I got uh, one. Yes, please. Um, fog, ro fog rod level controller. Um, just curious about what that's all about and where you testing it. Uh, it is on the Evergreen Farm pump station. Um, it's a. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think the. Flight used to use a um, very similar device called the Multitrode. Ah, uh, yes. And it's very similar to that. It, as a matter of fact, I think the uh, developer of the product came from that same company and uh, is, has developed his own version of it. Okay. I'm just curious. Um, as for sump pumps, uh, what we found is that sump pumps get removed more readily when there's a viable alternative for discharging that water. If you've got to say, you got to put it out the window of your yard, but it doesn't drain well in the yard, they end up back in the sewer. So I don't know, I don't have any great wisdom about it, but 
they get moved when there's incentive to move it, you know, positive incentive and a, a good alternative. Otherwise, we just got to deal with it at the plant. It, it, you know, that is true. I mean, it, it is something that, um, you know, is it's, a, it's always a moving target. There are some communities that now that actually allows them pumps to be connected, and they charge a fee for them. That's not a bad idea. That's a good idea. Not a bad idea as long as you have hydraulic capacity to handle right. all that flow. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think as we go forward um, and you get progress on the I and I work, if we have extensive sump pump connections, then I think it will be an issue that we'll need to deal with. Um, and I agree wholeheartedly with providing positive incentives for folks. Um, some folks are in situations where it's just difficult for them to have any option except pump it out yes. into the driveway. Right. Um, and in those cases, if people are going to continue to discharge that water, then I think they should have to pay for it. And um, otherwise, all of us are paying for folks to discharge basically clean water into That's our sewer is. system. And uh, we all end up not only paying on op the operating costs, but we end up paying future capital costs to upgrade the hydraulic capacity of the system and the treatment plant is going through an expensive per gallon treatment process for water that should be running down the roadside and mm -hmm. into streams and rivers. So I think we'll have to we'll have to deal with that depending on what the outcome of the superintendent's evaluations are. Okay. Um, I one more follow up thought on that is any new developments that come into town, does the town require a separate storm drain system with services going to private homes to drain foundations and basements? Well, there's, there's the, they're required to have uh, drainage systems uh, analysis done, and I don't know if there's a requirement for foundation drains to be attached to the, the uh, storm drain system or not, um, but that is what we are seeing. That's what we're seeing in, in our town that I work in, and it just works a lot better yeah. for these new homes and these new developments when there are two separate services. One the for DUP requires the they storm do. drain analysis. Okay. Now, so the analysis, yeah. but not necessarily the connection. Not necessarily okay. the connection. I, th I think they do, based upon the plans of my neighborhood, because they actually showed a, a line being put in for those houses that couldn't have uh, a positive outfall for their uh, basements and whatnot. So there was a line proposed for that. So I think they must be looking at that. Okay. And that might be a productive discussion to have with the codes office too. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, next item is correspondence. Um, by the agenda there is none. Has there anything, nothing late? Okay, so there are no correspondence items. Uh, old business, Easton Village, phase three. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, just uh, Carrie Anderson is here from uh, Ballantyne Development, and uh, they are requesting district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from 17 lots from uh, revised Phase 3 of the Easton Village subdivision. Phase 3, as originally proposed, has been broken up into actually three phases, um, Phase 3, 3A, and 3 uh, tonight you've been provided with the revised uh, phasing plan. Uh, the sewer extension will consist of approximately 1,890 uh, linear feet of 8-inch diameter gravity sewer with 13 manholes and sewer services to each of the 17 lots. The sewer extension does travel through future phases of this development, but no ser services will be run for any of those lots. Um, the sewer extension, manholes, and sewer laterals within the public right-of-way would be transferred over to the sanitary district upon completion of the project. I recommend approval with the following condition. Uh, the project is within the original sewer service area. The original lot uh, had an allocation of 52 residential uh, dwelling units. Phase 1, 2, 2A, and 2B utilized 47 of the f allotted 52 lots. 
Consequently, 12 lots of the proposed 17 lots are subject to the capacity reserve fee. This fee is based on single-family residential dwelling units without accessory units. Any additional homes, dwelling units, or accessory units in excess of this are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee per home is $2,869.42 and is adjusted monthly based on the Engineering News Record Cost Index. Based on the current ENR, the total capacity reserve fee due for the 12 dwelling units is $34,433.06. Uh, capacity reserve fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer extension permit. A copy of, a, of the recorded subdivision plan shall be provided to the district in both paper and electronic format. This uh, plan must uh, show the revised phasings for the uh, project as presented here tonight. And um, let's see, detectable underground marking tape shall be utilized on all sewer services um, and placed approximately three feet below grade directly above the pipe. Final plan signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits. Um, sewer permit is required. Um, a complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to the sewer extension work. And then sewer permits are required for each house. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time that the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. Installation of the sewer and sewer services will be expect, inspected and approved by the district. And finally, professionally surveyed electronic geo-reference CAD drawings and stamped PDF of the CAD drawings and a stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Mr. Chairman, recommend approval. With the caveats advised. With the caveats. Seconded. Do you want to Any questions or comments? The latest. So right now, the plan is shown. Uh, we're approving phase three, which is 17 units. 17 units total. 17 units. There's future, how many units in 3, 3A? Um, I don't remember now. Um, I think there was a total of 36 lots for the original phase three. Uh, one of the lots depends upon lot 118 being developed. It's a separate lot. Yeah, 118 is a um, multiple unit, and that has not been defined how many dwelling units that's going to be on there, but there's a total of 36. But that's on phase three B, right? Yeah. One eighteen. What will the entrance into phase three B? Will that be at the end of that road that has a T off it? Yes. Okay. So we're going to approve phase three. There is a line that will be constructed through three A. That will be just rocked over for now, in no connection. Correct. It will have the um, the Ys that, the Ys that, and they will be capped at the main for each of the lots that they as they go by. Okay. And where does the service of 3B come off? Does it go down that little private way? That's actually a public way. Or public way. Public yeah. way. Is that the main will go in through that? Yeah. There's a main extension that goes up that road. So there won't be any main extension up that private way until 3B is approved. Correct. Right? Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Anderson, you understand the district's policy on uh, payment of uh, reserve fees and all that now? I do. I had a couple things that I wanted to ask uh, the board to consider, but I do understand your, your, your question. So based upon when you come in for approval lots, we expect needs to be paid upon uh, issuance of that permit. Do you understand that? Sewer extension permit. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. I'm good. Any other uh, any other questions from board members? Um, I didn't catch all that between Rob and Mr. Anderson. I was just curious. Is this a change 
in the district policy, or is no. it consistent no. with our policy? This is consistent. Stands? This is consistent with our policy. I'm fine with it then. Thank you. Um, Kerry, do you have any comments you want to make to the board before we vote on the approval of the uh, phasing as it's been submitted? The only the only thing that I wanted to ask, and uh, I don't want to go against the superintendent's uh, um, recommendation, uh, it's getting late in the year. Uh, we have to um, now go to the planning board, get on the agenda, and get a recorded uh, mylar uh, outlining the uh, phasing and whatnot. Uh, I was just going to ask if the trustees would. Uh, would uh, uh, allow us to uh, uh, pay the re capacity reserve fee for the lots in phase three, as outlined, which is the 12 lots, uh, get the sewer extension uh, permit, uh, agree to sell no lots that are not presently sewered and have not paid the capacity reserve fee, and uh, allow us uh, uh, you know, short period of time to get the mylar uh, recorded because we're going to have to now make a submission to the planning board, get on the agenda, get the approval, get it recorded, and uh, it's the time of the year that's uh, that's really concerning. Mm -hmm. That's all. And uh, hopefully that doesn't again void the of the district well, policy. Well, let me let me just ask uh, Mr. Hughes if he has any issues with that with that approach specifically for this project. I don't. I can certainly um, issue the, be able to issue the sewer extension permit and then uh, hold back on any of the uh, permits for any of the homes in, in the phase, and that would allow them to move forward on the sewer extension and the manholes. Um, and you get put in the main line, and it's going to be a while before it gets up to the, the homes anyway. When is the next? Available submittal date to the town. Blank, blank. And I don't have a problem with what you're asking. Uh, I just, what I, I, would, I would think that it would be, it would be probably be November before he could get on the planning board agenda at this point in time. Anyway, right. So he'll so, be he'll be in the winter season by the time. So we should expect that we would be able to see a recorded plan back in December. I would hope December, so. uh, February, depending on the yeah, depending on the meeting schedules and how they put their agendas together. But I would say I would say by the first of the year you should be able to do that. And if not, there'll be an extenuating circumstance as to why, oh. and we still won't issue permits for individual house lots until I, that's I done. just don't want it to drag on. Yeah, I understand. You know, so mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with going forward with what you're requesting. I just if we can make a, a time certain you know, by the end of January that we see that I would say that's plenty of time to get into the town, get through the approval and get a recorded plan back. I can write that right in the um the approval letter that the you recorded subdivision the plan no, by the no, first no. of the year okay. and that no home permits will be issued until the sewer extension permit is provided. Okay. Uh, the uh, recorded subdivision plan is provided. I think that's reasonable. We could incorporate that as a condition of the motion, if you'd like to do that, gentlemen. I would like to do that. And I'll amend the second part. Okay. Um, so we'll treat that just as a friendly amendment, so we won't need to vote on the amended portion. So any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion as amended. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank, thank you, you Gary. Okay, no other old business, new business, the eight-month budget summary. Uh, the eight-month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. So moved. Seconded. Motion by Nick. Yeah. Second by Dave. Did you, I Any questions or comments? Did you get who got? She yeah. did. Yeah. Okay. Nick and Dave. Just quickly, uh, forecasting outward, do you see any unexpected in the next few months before the end of the year? Uh, <laughs> I think forecasting the unexpected. <laughs> Good one. I, I think there. anything that we... Uh, just within, your, that. within your control. Anything within your control that you see that's not in the budget. 
No, I, I, I think we're in, um, as long as, you know, everything goes as uh, we anticipate, we, we should be coming in on, on budget. But if something unexpected and catastrophic happens, <laughs> I'll we'll have to react. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes. Looking at this, our year-to-date budget is substantially lower than our year-to-date actual on this report. Is that correct? Um, where are you at? Um, the bottom of page, whatever page number it is. When you look at the year-to-date year -to budget, budget is $1.59 million. And our year-to-date actual spend is 1.9. What are the, the items that are, are not listed um, in this budget? I've been talking to Wendy about it on how we can actually incorporate them in there. Is there's um, uh, some expenditures that don't show up in this budget that is actually part of the, our uh, uh, approved budget? Um, I wish I had the original budget with me. Um, Wendy, do you remember what those, it, it was some items that, that were part of the, uh, out of the capacity reserve account and items out of the uh, fixed asset accounts that were um, not within the operations budget, outside of the operations budget? And um, they aren't, the, their monies aren't shown here on this report, and they never have been in the past. Um, and I was actually asking Wendy how we could incorporate that information in, in, in this report so, so that you don't get that discrepancy. So you're saying it's not included in the budget, but... Not included in this report. This is an oper the operations budget. Okay. Why are we about 300 and something different in operations right now? Be oh, because the, the monies are actually being, being expended under our operations budget, and then at the end of the year they do a transfer out of the operations budget and take it out of the, the um, fixed asset accounts. And they well, let, me I, let me add to that. It, it looks like you have principal listed here, correct? Yep. So Which principal is not an actual expense. It's, it's a transfer of cash. So mm -hmm. if you take that out, does that reconcile a number Pretty close. back to yeah. what the budget Pretty close goes to? Yeah. Pretty close. 400 and some thousand. Yeah, because, yeah, again, you're listing that as an operations expense. Yeah. It's not truly an really. expense. Yeah. So it really should not be under expenses. We are paying cash for it, but it's not an expense. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a debt payment. That is an actual disbursement that we make. It's a disbursement, from, but from an actuarial basis, you don't show it as a expense. It's shown as a cash transfer. No, it's the principal payment on loans. Right, I understand that. Okay. But you're yes, but it's so ultimately it will show in our operating budget, but it doesn't show in the year-to-date budget at this point in time. So why wouldn't it? Why don't you just put it in there for uh, because they probably have it, they probably have it scheduled to be paid in November or December, and that's yeah. when it. Oh, 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 oh! I see what you mean. So it was all it was all submitted as part of our budget, reviewed as part of our budget. So if you look at the next column over where it says annual budget, it's included there. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's just the year-to-date budget is funky and, and, because and, it's off from my and, month. In that case, that's a timing issue and how yeah. the yeah, how it was. Last month. Um, you know, when 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 Sandy sets up the the the, um, yeah, the budget on the month to month, she yeah. tries to tar she tried to identify when those expenses were going to hit, and mm. sometimes she missed they, the mark. Thirty but days. Next month will be good. It yeah. Be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, now I see where yeah, that's coming. Yeah, it's a, right. Basically, what we're looking yeah. at is a cash flow issue right now, yeah. and that that disbursement was made ahead of when it was scheduled. Yeah. So it's not showed in the year to date budget because that payment. Was shown was was expected to be made after September 30th. That's what it is. Or no, August 31st. <laughs> I feel much better now. Okay. Yeah. There's no there's no discrepancy. There's no shortfall in our budget. No. We're we're still in good shape. Any other questions or comments? All right. Uh, we have a motion to approve. All in favor? None opposed. Thank you.
Um, public comments, uh, no members of the public remaining. Trustee comments. Nick, we'll start with you. Mm. I want to laud the man or the men on call during that six inch rain event. I know they were probably running around to many different stations as well as dealing with plant issues. That would be Kudos Phil, to that them. Would be Phil Con Conley and then uh, Carl Tucker also came in. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate it. I just wanted to uh, encourage Dave that, uh, and, and thank you for sending folks off to WEFTEC. A lot of people, that's the first thing that gets cut out of the budget, and I think it's always good to keep people up to date and training and, and looking for ways to save money and, and use the district's resources effectively. So, It's a, it's a great opportunity for Glenn and Israel. He's already got it scheduled um, to meet with a bunch of vendors down there for um, to evaluate different op things that we can do at our plant for efficiency purposes. Great. Dave? All set. Thank you. Rob? Hey, once again, uh, Kudos to staff for all the hard work, and uh, it really shows with the reputation that the district has. So thank you for that. And uh, I guess there's no holidays between now and the next meeting, so. Uh, Columbus Day. Oh, Columbus Day. Well, ha happy Columbus Day, everybody. <laughs> thank you. Um, I guess I'd echo the comments that have already been made. Um, and I would, uh, unrelated to sanitary district business, however, I'd like to take note of the passing of Raymond Osborne, um, my father-in-law, who is 98 and a half years old, was a bronze star medal winner during World War II, um, and uh, served his country uh, with distinction for three and a half years. He was... Uh, all across uh, <clears throat> North Africa, Sicily, was at Utah Beach, Battle of the Bulge, crossed the Rhine River, and was one of the liberating forces at the Buchenwald concentration camp. A really unique man who, uh, after he got home, raised his family, but never went to VA for a single penny of benefits or assistance. Um, great guy, and he'll be missed. So I just wanted to... Uh, officially put that acknowledgement on the record for the benefit of my wife and her family. So thanks for bearing with me on that. Um, motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Unopposed. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. <laughs>